Welcome back to the third part in this series. In this one we're going to talk about hooking up the database to our Django project and in this one instead of using SQLite 3 like we did in the last video series just to get up and running quickly I thought I'd take a slightly different database backend for this project and show you sort of how to configure MySQL in your Django settings. Now this isn't a MySQL sort of tutorial or setup uh, video series so I'm not going to actually talk about how you might set up MySQL, how you're going to get it installed on your computer or anything like that because it's very specific to your operating system uh, but it's not too difficult, you can find that those instructions quite easily online uh, if you want me to make a separate video you can let me know in the comments but for, for this video I'm just going to go through the actual Django configuration uh, assuming that you've already got MySQL set up so in my, uh, in my terminal here I can do MySQL and I can log in as the root user, for example, and I get to a MySQL prompt. Now that shows me that I have MySQL installed on my computer, and uh, if you may have had a specified password depending on how you set it up, but you can see uh, I'm using MySQL 5.7, and that is the version that we're going to be using, though it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I'm going to try to make Django talk to my MySQL database instead of my SQLite 3 database backend which would have just created a database file. If I do git status, I create a git repository as well. That doesn't just only show any changes actually because I've committed all of them, but uh, in the actual project itself we do have an SQLite 3 database file at the moment. Now I'm not going to need that, so I'm actually going to delete that because we haven't even run any migration so there's really nothing in it as such. Uh, so now that I've got rid of that, and I also added a git ignore file, that's the only other thing I've done, I've just set up the git repository because uh, I've already shown you sort of how to do that in a different series so if we're going to configure the database backend we need to go back to the settings file and I'm just going to put a new line in here to separate the import but if we scroll down to databases this is the main bit that we want to change so at the moment if we run the Django server do Django admin run server and that does work at the moment in the sense that we don't get any errors uh, as such, we don't get any exceptions being raised by Django but we do have this sort of uh, big warning here that says we have 13 unapplied migrations and at the moment if we were to run those migrations uh, we would just put that into our database backend for SQLite 3 uh, so of course that's not what we want, we want to change that to MySQL and we don't really need uh, too many settings here except for the credentials that you use to log in so I'm going to keep it simple and just use uh, root in this case uh, as in my MySQL root user as you saw I logged in with MySQL uh, so I use MySQL-u root so like that and that just means I'm logging in as the root user uh, I didn't specify password because I, I chose to set it up without one just for ease of use really. But to configure the actual Django project itself I'm going to put a string here and I'm going to call it uh, to do, i just leave it as to do uh, for the database name and for the uh, username I'm just going to specify, specify that as root and for the uh, password I'm just going to leave that blank because we don't actually need one we shouldn't do I don't think so that's just going to be an empty string so now that we've done that we should be able to go and uh, well let's see so we could do django admin db shell and what that does is that drops you into the command line prompt for the database backend that you've got set up uh, so now we get an error and the reason for that is because I don't think we have the the sort of interface layer between Python and the MySQL database setup on my computer. So if we do pip3 uh, list then we can see everything that I've got installed in the virtual environment and as you can see there's nothing to do with MySQL here. Now if you're using Python 2 you'll want MySQL-Python but we're using Python 3 so I'm going to do pip3 install uh, MySQL client and that gives Django the ability uh, to interface with MySQL. MySQL client is the recommended one by Django uh, for using a MySQL database backend. Uh, 
so now that we've got that, let's try and do DB Shell again and see what we get. So this time when we try to enter the Django uh, database command line interface, uh, we get an error. And so this might look kind of cryptic at first, but if you think about what we've just done, is we've got MySQL running locally, and we've said to Django, I want to point at a specific database using the MySQL backend. Now we've got the MySQL client, which is the interface, but sort of between uh, Python itself and MySQL. It's sort of the filling in the gap there so that they can interface with each other more easily. But what we've done in the Django settings is we've specified a name to do. And as I said, that's the name of the database. It doesn't automatically create that for you. So what we need to do is we need to do that manually. Uh, I'm just going to go to mysql-u uh, root. So mysql is the root user. I'm going to do show databases. And that will give us everything that we have. Uh, by the way, it's just conventional to put uh, uh, words like this in SQL in capitals, but uh, it's not actually case sensitive, it's just a convention. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to create a database and I'm going to call that to do, and that's to do to match the name that I specified in my Django settings. Uh, so create database to do, you should get query OK, and if I do uh, show databases again. Uh, remembering to put that semicolon on the end because SQL uh, does require that, or MySQL at least. And uh, so now we've got an extra one we've got to do. Uh, so using command uh, control D to quit out of that, that should give us access to uh, be able to run those migrations and interface with the MySQL backend. What I'm going to do now to check that Django does understand the backend and that they can sort of communicate effectively is I'm going to try again to uh, run. Uh, get into the MySQL prompt from Django. So Django admin db shell and so now you can see it does actually give us the same prompt as if we'd have gone through MySQL directly. Uh, now that's good because it means that our Django settings have actually been configured correctly. Uh, so now if, if we try to run a migration I feel very confident about the fact that it would be going into this to-do database because uh, we can access it through the DB shell. Let's try that then. So I'm going to do Django admin, uh, well let's say run server just so that I can see again how many migrations I've got to apply. So I've still got to apply 13 migrations uh, across a few core Django applications. So we've got admin, auth, content types and sessions. Uh, I could do Django admin uh, show migrations to show uh, what, I, what I need to apply. Uh, so that's just another view, it breaks it down by app in terms of the migrations that need to be applied. Uh, so at the moment our database is just completely empty, we've just created it, it's got no data in it so we need to apply everything. So Django admin migrate is going to apply the migrations. Note that we don't actually have to make migrations because as, it's, as you can see here, it's already made them. Uh, so now that looks like it's been applied successfully, I'm going to go ahead and run the Django server and we shouldn't see that warning error anymore. Now MySQL is working and set up with our Django project at this point, but it's always a good practice when you add a requirement to your Django project that you update the requirements files that you have. So I'm going to do that now. And so let's say for example, I didn't know the version of the MySQL client that I had just installed. So I could show you everything uh, by doing pip list or because I'm using Python 3 it would be pip 3 list and so I could do that uh, and that would show me everything but if we actually wanted it in the format that our requirements file requires then we could use what's called pip freeze and a handy trick that I like to use so these are the actual requirements that uh, would be expected to be listed in the uh, requirements file and in, the, in our case our base.txt file uh, but a handy little trick I like to use if this list gets particularly long which it can do in a lot of sort of uh, you know, more usable Django projects, uh, what you can do is pipe that into grep. So I could do pip freeze, uh, and then if I wanted MySQL client, I could do, I could just do grep, or in this case ggrep, because I want gnu grep, uh, and then let's say I could just search for MySQL, and then that'll only give me the ones with MySQL in the name. Uh, so I can just take that, and I'm just going to stick that into the requirements uh, base.txt. So I'm just going to add that there. 
and we're using 1.3.10 in this case. Now that's pretty much it for connecting our MySQL database to our uh, Python and Django project. Uh, so in the next one we're actually going to carry on trying to develop more of the front end of this application.